I'm Melissa Case from Hat to Head, and today we are doing something. something. Today we are doing a bit of a challenge again. So you may remember that in my first video diary, I did a quick little challenge to try and get a dress done in a short amount of time. I think it was a week. I can't remember really, honestly. I'm doing that again. <laughs> It's around 4.30 on October 28th, and I am trying to get a Halloween costume done before the 31st so I can wear to work. Now, I'm starting so late in the game because I just finished the Mina commission, and I'm really excited how it turned out, and I spent a lot of time answering comments on Facebook uh, about the stress and everything, so that took up a lot more time than I expected it to today. So I'm getting a pretty late start. But now I have to quickly try and clean up my space and get this dress going. Since I work at a library, I decided to do kind of a book themed dress, kind of. If I can get this done by Thursday, I'm going to be dressed as Laura Ingalls Wilder from the TV show Little House on the Prairie. This dress was worn in seasons, I want to say five, six, seven, and eight. I Maybe nine, six, seven, eight, nine, five. It doesn't matter. The dress was worn by Laura, played by Melissa Gilbert, who, fun fact, I am named after. Anyway, I wanted to make this dress for my mom. My mom is a huge Little House on the Prairie fan, it has been for a very, 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 very long time. I'm just kidding, she's not really that old. I'm sorry, mom. She's been a fan of the show since it aired. I'm named after Melissa Gilbert, the dog was named after Bandit. It was a whole thing in our household. I actually got her the box set for Christmas a couple years ago, and we've been very, very, very slowly watching it. I think we're in season five, but I could be wrong. And I really wanted to make this dress kind of to surprise her because she'll be coming over on Halloween and she doesn't know I'm doing this. And it just so happened that while I was at Joanne's the other day, I saw the perfect fabric for it. And I knew I had to get the Mina dress done in order to make this gown. So I got that done this morning. Today is my last day off between now and Halloween, so I have a bit of work to do. I already got into the corset and the, the bustle and everything to take my new measurements. I ended up having to wear my shift instead of my chemise because I couldn't find my chemise. It's somewhere in the house, I hope, but who knows where. I swear I'm usually more organized than this. Oh, well, Evan might not agree, but usually I'm a bit more organized than this. Anyway, the plan is to try and get this dress done as quickly as possible. I'm doing a little bit of a mix between the TV show and something a little more historically accurate, uh, mainly that I'm going to be wearing a corset with it, uh, but hopefully I have everything I need and this will come together fairly quickly, we'll see. And I should stop talking because I've been talking for six minutes now and I really need to get started. So I had to be done procrastinating and I will check in soon. So here are the three patterns that I'll be using for my Laura Ingalls Wilder dress. As you saw earlier, the dress I'm basing this on is the reddish brown, burnt sienna, whatever color that is, dress, along with the teal underskirt. I am working with what I have on hand. These patterns might not be perfect for this project, but they're what I'm going with. So to start out, I have my 1870s underskirt. I decided that I wanted to wear a bustle with this dress. Uh, that's mainly because I just like bustles and I think they look nice, and I wanted to show off a little bit for my co-workers and our patrons, so that's why I am going with the bustle. 
this skirt is actually going to be a little outdated compared to when the books actually take place. I think Laura Ingalls actually got married around 1880. So, strictly speaking, there really shouldn't be a bustle at all right now. But, you know, I'm taking some creative license. I'm also pretty sure she's not wearing a corset in the show, so I think I can get away with this. Her skirt is also pretty full in the show, so even though it would be pretty slim in the 1880s, I'm going a little fuller just so I'm a little closer to what was in the show. Besides, this isn't a small town back in the pioneering days. It probably took a little longer for the fashions to reach Minnesota back then. So we're going with a slightly fuller skirt with a bit of a bustle, even though it'd be a little outdated. And we're going to be okay with that. I'm planning on using TV 365 1883 August overskirt for the front of the dress. To this, I'm going to be probably extending it a bit further in the back like it is in the show. And I'm going to also be adding a teal ruffle to the bottom of this. I'm opting to go with this pattern rather than drafting my own overskirt just because I think it will take less time. We'll see. And lastly, this is my bodice pattern. I'm going with TV 460, uh, the 1885 bustle curtless bodice. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I probably didn't. I'm going to have to alter this one a little bit because her bodice in the show is kind of more cut off straight. Doesn't really have these nice little points, so I'll be fixing that. Uh, there's going to be less buttons, obviously, and I'm going to have to add uh, some trim along this top bit here. I'm not quite sure how I'm doing that yet. I figure I will worry about that when I get to it. All right, so I better get started on transferring the patterns. All right, so this is the fabric I chose for the underskirt. It is polyester, which I try to avoid, but it's a really nice color. It was really close to the reference pictures I was looking at. And I'm not fully convinced that she wasn't wearing polyester in the show. Uh, who knows, it may have been something else. But based off of the pictures I was looking at, it kind of looked like a polyester. So that's why I'm going with this. I think I might use the wrong side of the fabric just to cut down on how shiny it is. But this is what we're going with. And I, I'm actually really happy with the color matching. I think it looks pretty close. So hopefully it'll be easy to work with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pattern and cut out this fabric and I'm also going to cut it out out of cotton muslin uh, to use as a flat lining just to kind of give it a little bit more weight and hopefully this ends up turning out okay.
Okay, so it's somehow two o'clock in the morning. I just sewed for, I think about an hour and eight minutes straight. So that was kind of fun. I actually haven't done that in a while. And I recorded all of it. It should be right before this clip. I'm probably going to time lapse that because I don't think you want to watch an hour and eight minutes of real time sewing. I don't even want to watch that much sewing. All right, so the overskirt is done except for the hem which I think I might save until I get the rest of the dress done, if only because 
I mean, I want to, I want the dress to settle a bit, but if I have to in a pinch, I can machine sew that instead of doing it by hand like I usually do. But other than that, the underskirt is done. So hopefully I can do the overskirt tomorrow and the bodice on Wednesday. I'm kind of cutting it close, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so it's Tuesday and I'm getting ready to start the overskirt, but it appears that I cut this pattern out a while ago. And unfortunately, I'm not this size anymore. So I need to figure out what I'm doing for the overskirt now. I think the fastest thing to do would just be to drape it directly on the dress form, but we'll see how that goes. So what I'm doing right now is I'm running a basting stitch along this bottom curve of my front apron. I'm doing this so I know where my front edge is. So when I run this through my serger, I know what point to be serging off. So then once it's surged, I'll be able to press it up and just run it through my sewing machine and this part will be done.
Oh my goodness, look at that. Okay, so it's almost 1 a.m. And I have to be up at 6.30 for a work-related thing. So, I have to stop here tonight. But I'm actually very happy with how this is turning out. You can see I added these pleats to the overskirt because it was coming across a little flat. So I wanted it to look a little more interesting for the people who aren't going to understand this reference. And I'm not expecting too many people to get it right away. So I opted for what I think is going to end up looking better as opposed to what might be screen accurate. Alright, so all that's left for tomorrow is the bodice, the waistband for the overskirt, and the hem of the underskirt. And then we'll be ready to go. Good morning. It is Wednesday. Halloween is tomorrow. And I still need to make my bodice. So that's what I'm working on today. I was going to try and just use a pattern, but unfortunately, I cut this pattern out too. <laughs> So what that means is I need to come up with a plan B, which in this case is probably going to be draping my bodice directly on my dress form and hoping for the best. So I'm going to do that because it is already 9.10. I have to leave for work at 12.40 and then I won't be home until 9. So I need to try and get as much done with this as possible. So... I better stop talking and just do it. Okay, so here is my mock-up for the bodice. I made the front out of two different pieces because there's a piece of teal trim that runs along the front of the dress and I figured that kind of sandwiching it between those two seams would be the easiest way to accomplish that. We are from the side. I feel like I probably should have made this piece here into two panels, but oh well. Hopefully doing just one will save me a bit of time even if it kind of makes the fit a little less accurate. You can't really see where the seams are in the original costume, so I'm taking a bit of a liberty trying to make life a little bit easier. And then we have, and then we have the back uh, with the little pleats along the bottom. Hopefully those turn out okay. So I'm going to bring this over to the sewing table and take this thing apart and use it as my pattern. Okay, it's quarter of 11 and I have my back pieces all prepped here. What I did extra with these pieces is uh, this bottom bit where it's going to be pleated. 
I put a piece of fabric down here where the pleats will be. Uh, and that's because I wanted to make sure that when this gets kind of pleated a little bit, not much, obviously it's not very long, but uh, the part that gets pleated, you'll be able to see the actual fabric instead of seeing white where those pleats are. So hopefully that works out. Um, I'm going to stitch these up real fast and then move on to the front. Okay, so right now I am working on uh, the front and the bodice. I already did, uh, I already attached the front to the front side and the side back to the, you know, the back panels and everything as you saw earlier. Uh, right now I'm putting a facing along the front. I don't usually do this, but I didn't want to have a white streak where this kind of came over. I was afraid that would be a little distracting. So I'm just doing this to hide the edge. I started to one side and now I'm going to just stitch it down at the top to hold it in place. And this is going to be where I put my buttonholes. goodness I'm so tired okay it's 10 after 11 it's Wednesday night I've been up since 6 30 I am so tired right now but the dress isn't done yet I'm getting it done don't give me that look I'm getting it done I'm going to get it done I'm just waiting for my second wind right now actually at this point it might be more like my fourth wind since I've been up since 6 30. I know people get up at 6 30 all the time and they're fine. I did it for years when I was in school But I'm not in school anymore. I'm not used to it and I'm a night owl usually so uh, I'm hurting. <laughs> I'm really hurting right now uh, And it's only 11 But something really cool happened. I got over 300 likes on my Facebook page, which is exciting. Two days ago, I only had 130 and now I have 300. If you're one of my new followers, hi and thank you. So I'm kind of excited about that. It's because I posted my Mina dress and it got shared a couple of times. It's gotten shared 76 times. So I'm really excited about that, even though I am almost too tired to be like 100% excited about anything. We all know that feeling, right? I'm sure there's something else I could say right now, but I really don't know what to say because I'm really tired. 
a part of me knows this is probably kind of dangerous because I feel like getting too tired and going near a sewing machine is kind of not the best idea. But if I don't work tonight, this dress isn't getting done because I would have a limited time tomorrow. So, just gonna pull through it. Okay, so at this point, what's left is I have to do the sleeves, I have to do the buttons, I have to do the collar, I have to hem the main skirt and put a waistband on the underskirt. Oh, the overskirt. I need to put a waistband on the overskirt. Which, all in all, not too bad. It could be worse. Um, I got this, right? I got this. I'm thinking I should probably do the collar, then the buttons, then the sleeves, then the skirt. Worst comes to worst, I can hem the skirt in bed and just fall asleep and wake up and start hemming again. So that's not too bad. The waistband might have to wait till tomorrow. We'll see how I'm doing by the time I get to it. It says with a winner. Does that mean I'm a winner or does that mean I have to give it to a winner? Does that imply I'm not a winner? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. All right. Can't procrastinate anymore. Time to get working. So today is Thursday and no, today's Monday. Monday. I know today's Monday. I know I messed up. Ugh. It's Monday night. Halloween was on Thursday? Thursday? Right up? Thursday. Thursday. Halloween was on Thursday. The costume was well received. A couple people recognized who I was, which was kind of nice. I know I kind of dropped the ball with filming the last section there, but it was almost 3 in the morning and I had been up since 6, so I was kind of just trying to get it done. We've all been there, right? Anyway, because I was so sleep deprived, a couple of sections didn't turn out quite as well as I would have wanted. Honestly, it's really just two sections. I have a photo shoot with this dress on Thursday. Thursday? Thursday. So now I have to fix up those sections. Luckily, it's just two things. So uh, first off, I need to turn one of my cuffs around it seems like a very minor thing, but of all the possible placements for this seam, it ended up being kind of like right here where you could see it. So I need to fix that. The other thing I need to do is fix one of the front panels on my bodice. And this is definitely proof that I was very sleep deprived by the time I was working on this because I have way too many buttonholes on the front of my bodice. The problem was the buttons weren't quite lining up the buttonholes I made and I knew exactly where I wanted those buttons to be. So instead of, I don't know what the other option was, instead of moving the buttons, I guess, I decided that I was just going to add more buttonholes. So I have about twice as many buttonholes as I needed to have, just in the attempt to get everything to match up. I like to think that that's not going to take too long, but we'll see. But that's a project for tomorrow, because today is Monday, as I already said. It's kind of late. I just finished recording the rest of my narration for the Mina embroidery video and I'm kind of ready for bed. So sometime between now and Thursday I'm going to have to fit in fixing those two sections. Hopefully it won't take too long, but we'll see. And I promise that I'll be better filming this section than I was filming last week.
people talking. Well, this is a little different. Welcome to my car. I just finished up my photo shoot with Preston. I had a wonderful time. I am so excited to see what these pictures end up looking like. It's going to be fantastic. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. That's all I really have to say right now. I am heading back to my in-laws and then we are driving down to a friend's house for her day after Thanksgiving. It is the day after Thanksgiving, by the way. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for these pictures.